so hello welcome back to my channel so on my previous video i'm already done discussing the introduction of re revised panel code and now for this video we are going to talk about article one of the rpc and by the way uh, please excuse me for any grammatical errors on my videos or mispronunciation of some of my english words because nobody's perfect mga beshi so without further ado let's start our discussion so article one uh really it it really talks about ah by the way i am um, I am using the same reference for this video, so the book of Judge Abudiente and the book of Luis B. Reyes. So, Article 1 just talks about the date of effectiveness of the code. So, I'm gonna read it. So, Article 1, Time When Act Takes Effect. So, this code shall take effect on the first day of January 1932. So, that's all for Article 1. So, prior to the enactment of the Revised Panel Code, Act Number 3815, criminal acts were punished mainly by the Spanish Panel Code of 1887, which was supplemented by related panel laws. So, these were enforced up to December 21, 19. Uh, 31 so so basically the revised the revised panel code consists of two books so the first book is from article 1 to article 113 so the uh, the book one has two parts so the first one is the basic principles affecting criminal liability and this is article 1 to 20 and then the second one is the provisions on penalties including criminal and civil liability this would be an article 21 and up to article 113 and for the book 2 it defines uh, felonies with with the corresponding penalties classified and group under 14 different titles so this is under article 114 to article 365 so there is i think there is nothing to be discussed on this article so we're just going to discuss about the history of the revised panel code so i'm just going to read uh the book of luis b reyes for this discussion it's not actually a discussion this is just a reading of bo the book right? so the history of revised panel code so this code is called revised panel code because the committee which was created by administrative order number 94 of the department of justice dated october 18 1927 composed of Anaclecto Diaz as chairman and Quintin Paredes, Guillermo Guevara, Alex Reyes, and, Mar and Mariano H. De, De Hoya as members was instructed to revise the old panel code, taking into consideration the existing conditions and special panel laws and the rulings laid down by the Supreme Court. So the committee did not undertake the codification of all penal laws in the Philippines. What the committee did was merely to revise the old penal code and to include in the draft the other penal laws related to it. So that's why it's called the Revised Penal Code Act Number 3815 as amended. So the RPC does not embody the latest progress of criminal science as the result of the application of advanced and radical theories still remain to be seen. So the old panel code, which was revised by the com committee, took effect in the Philippines on July 14, 1887 and was in force up to December 
31, 1931. So, let's take uh, the example of the case of U.S. versus Tamparong. So, the Supreme Court traced the history of the Old Penal Code as follows. The Royal Order dated December 17, 1886 directed the execution of the Royal Decree of September 4, 1884, wherein it was ordered that the Penal Code enforced in the peninsula as amended in accordance with the recommendation of the Code Committee be published and applied in the Philippine Islands. So this law, having been published in the official gazette of Manila on March 13 and 14, 1887, became effective four months thereafter. So the revised penal code, as enacted by the Philippine legislator, was approved on December 8, 1930. It took effect on January 1, 1932. So felonies and misdemeanors, misdemeanors? I don't know how to pronounce it. So felonies and misdemeanors committed prior to January 1, 1932 were punished in accordance with the code or acts in force at the time of their commission as directed by Article 366 of the Revised Battle Code. So that's all for the history of the Revised Battle Code. Now let's talk about uh, the basis on the principle uh, of the Revised Penal Code. So the Revised Penal Code is based mainly on principles of the classical school. So the RPC continues like the old penal code to be based on the principle of the old or classical school, although some provisions of eminently positivistic tendency, those having reference to the punishment of impossible crimes, juvenile de delinquency, etc., were incorporated in the present code. So, there are basically two theories in criminal law. So, I already discussed this on my previous video. So, the one that is classical theory and the positivism theory. But I will uh, discuss it here because I think I missed some points on my previous discussion. So, so again, the two theories in criminal law includes the classical theory and the positive, positivist theory. So, I already gave the overview of that theory. Let us proceed to its characteristic. So, the first one is the characteristic of the classical theory. So, number one. So, in classical theory, so the basis of criminal liability is the human free will or the freedom of, yeah, the freedom of a person. Uh, yeah, the freedom of an individual. And the purpose of the penalty is retribution. So retribution, again, it means punishment. And then number two, that man is essentially a moral creature with an absolutely free will to choose between good and evil, thereby placing more stress upon the effect or result of the felonious act that upon the man, the criminal himself. And then number three, it has endeavored to establish a mechanical and direct proportion between crime and penalty and then the last one is that there is a scant regard to the human element now let's proceed to the characteristic of the positivist theory so number one is that that man is subdued occasionally by a strange and morbid phenomenon which constrains him to do wrong in spite of or contrary to his volition 
and the number two that crime is essentially a social and natural phenomenon and as such it cannot be treated and checked by the application of abstract principles of law and jurisprudence nor by the imposition of a punishment fixed and determined a priori but rather through the enforcement of individual measures in which particular case after a thorough personal and individual investigation conducted by a competent body of psychiatrists and social scientists so i think that would be all uh, for article one so again article one stresses the effectivity of the revised panel code so the revised panel code takes effects on the first day of january 19 1932 so that ends my discussion bye bye